What's up everybody and welcome to my Impact Wrestling Review. A lot of big things happen on the show tonight, so let's kick it off with um well Magnus tonight on TNA. Talking about his I guess his big loss last week and how it was kinda of disappointing, but and Jay was going to pretty much go on tonight because he didn't win the BFG series. And pretty much Bobby Roode saying that, um, told him to blame himself and pretty much Magnus grabbed him and tried to fight Bobby Roode until bad influence came up and started jumping him in. Then pretty much Magnus came out to the ring saying he was hurt, but he's ready to kick some ass and everything. I guess AJ was pretty much um, the best right now. He wished him good luck for the title. And pretty much he called out Ego. And them, so pretty much Kaz came out first for a one on one match, but Daniels then came out. Magnus was handling them until Rudy came out there, until the rest of the main event mafia then came out. Joe Sting and uh, Joe and Sting pretty much coming out to save Magnus, telling it will be a six man tag tonight the main event mafia versus Ego. And uh, pretty much, um, well, Chris Saban, uh, was talking to uh, T.J. Perkins or Manic. For some reason, they always sh they don't ever show this guy's face, even though he takes off the mask of these back shots to him. So was, um, he had to go one on one with Jeff Hardy tonight. I don't, I don't even really why they need to have his mask on. We already know the hell he looks like. Now they don't want to show his face and do these back shot camera angles for no reason. Uh, Jeff Hardy went against Manic. Um, Jeff Hardy feeding with the Swan Time Bomb. Even though I feel like Jeff Hardy really outdid him in this match. Matt. Um, Chris Saban was out there watching. Chris Saban then came in the ring and then just started attacking Manic then, taking him out, and pretty much was in the back saying he was really disrespectful. He's got the most disrespectful person he's ever met. And yeah, uh, pretty much taking him out. It's all the wrestlers because Saban was talking to him earlier. So I've been, I've been X Division champion, tag team champion, world champion. Uh, Mickey James winning his ODB for the knockouts title. Um, ODB won the belt pretty much beating pretty much beating uh, Mickey James for the title tonight. They got top rope slamming her now doing tornado DDT. So ODB is now the new knockouts champion. Eric Young and Joseph Pars came out to celebrate until the bromance came out. Uh, Robbie E. and Jesse pretty much challenging them. Robbie E. went against Eric Young. He rolled, Eric Young rolled him up and beat him in like four seconds. Then he challenged Joseph Parks and Joseph Parks did the same role. But what the fuck was that segment about? It didn't make sense. Uh, then pretty much the romance that threw Parks into the turnbuckle and they pretty much turned into the turnbuckle and started beating up Eric Young until Chris, until uh, Chris Joseph Parks pretty much uh, turned into a bitch and destroyed both of them. Black hole slamming Robbie and choke slamming Robbie T. Uh, not Robbie T. I'm sorry, uh, Jesse right there. So he pretty much took him out. So uh, he, it, this segment didn't make much sense at all. It never made any type of sense. Why did it happen? Dixie Carter was in the back arriving. She was on her phone checking messages. She had Hogan asked if if he needed if she needed him tonight, and said she had it under control. Aces and eights came out. What's ever left of them? Uh, pretty much as aces and eights went against them. Aces and eights were out there. Pretty much said their vice president out, wasn't out there. He said, "Do you know who I am?" Bully Ray pretty much had to thank one person for all what's happened and thank. Brooke, <laughs> yeah, Brooke Tessmacher there, and then pretty much the rest of the group got mad that we've been busting our asses, and this is what we get, and then told you have to, res and Billy Ray told him you need to respect him because he's the leader of this group, and pretty much Knox said it used to be like 25 of us, what is it now, four, everyone's pretty much gone now, even though it's 25 no-name guys until you had D-Lo Brown, he got released, um, Devon, he's gone, uh, who else is in the group? Anderson's not. Luke Gallows got released. So, in a way, Aces and Aces looks like shit now, and it doesn't look like they didn't have much of a group left. And pretty much, as Knox said, bros before hoes, uh, and pretty much Ray pushed them in the back then. 
some of us saying uh, she's not, not at all with the crowd chanted hold in so I, I guess pretty much then after that the main event might be top of those three of them left the numbers Kurt's not here Rampage Jackson's got to do his whole Bellator thing coming up in November against Tito Ortiz so um yeah but there's really not much of uh, Aces and Eights left, so I don't know how long I'm going to keep this going. Uh, Chavo and Hernandez came out, to, I guess, to probably fight James Storm and Gunner. Gunner went to fight tonight, so he went against Hernandez. Gunner pretty much beat Hernandez down to your Nagi or backbreaker or something. Went in the match, or I would call Hernandez and Chavo Mexican America 3 or 4.0. Oh. Um, Excuse me. Ego went against the main event Mafia. Pretty much a uh, really good six man tag, I gotta say that. Pretty much coming to the end of the, it, really got high, high, high paced. Sting was hitting the Scorpion Death Drop, I'm sorry, Death Lock on Kazarian, I believe, or or Daniels. And pretty much Bobby Roode uh, had came in. Pretty much Magnus had came in the ring, was trying to stop. Uh, Kazarian at, at the ropes, but Bobby Roode came out of nowhere with a baseball bat and hit Magnus in the back since he was the legal man and pinned him and picked up the win, beating the main event Mafia tonight. So, um, pretty much a good match, but, um, we'll see what happens next week on that. And as AJ Styles came out to the ring, he talked about a lot of things about Dixie Carter, about his contract, about everybody on the internet talking about his contract saying it was expiring, saying he doesn't work for TNA, and how TNA saying he built this house, and how it's being turned into nothing of her hiring all these MMA guys and firing guys like Jerry Lynn, Low Key, Alex Shelley, Petey Williams, Jay Lethal, saying guys that were day one, people that were day one in this company, you unceremoniously got rid of, saying this company wasn't going anywhere. You got rid of the biggest names just for these MMA guys or quick buck guys that only wanted to stay here and learn nothing in the past two years of their career. So, he said he was going to, he is fighting for the belt at Bound for glory. He's gonna be fighting for that title against Bully Ray. He said he's doing it for his fallen brothers, his brothers. He said he's doing it for the fans. He's doing the show. Dixie Carter's gonna happen. And when he's done, he says he's gonna start paying for what's happening to his company. Dixie Carter pretty much came out. Was gonna really gonna apologize, saying she was sorry, but sorry. So I think he was special to this company. And she pretty much went on and said, "Yeah, her dad owns a." Our oil rig company and why she has a wrestling company now and pretty much says without her dad's paycheck you wouldn't get paid either and be living in a trailer park then pretty much saying that where's your five star matches AJ what where where are they it's all about the marketing gimmick of this whole phenomenal one it's all a gimmick she says so uh pretty much the pay pretty much um uh, Dixie Car, I guess this is almost like a shoot out here if you want to look at it like that. A shoot in a way. But Dixie Carter just says she runs this company trying to say, You're gonna invite me to my ring and then AJ is gonna just say something like you need to take that mic and shove up, you know where it has to go. And Dixie Carter pretty much got pissed, took the cameraman's headset out of his ear and says, um, cut his mic, cut his mic, in the show. It's over. Cut the lights off. Everybody pretty much booed and ended the show there. Which is, I don't get why this whole shoot light like, thing even happened. It came out of nowhere, especially for Dixie Carter, really. And how AJ is allowed shooting, making these heel type of promos, even though he was all this dark character. But now he's a uh, he's back to regular AJ Styles now. I assume, but still trying to cut heel promos about this company and how bad it is, and how half of these good ass talent were fired, originals in TNA, and where are they now? So it, a lot of this promo, somewhat makes sense and doesn't make sense in a lot of way. But we have to give it a few up and coming weeks. It's it's almost worse than the Claire. This is not like the Claire Lynch thing because that was bad. Also, I thought it was gonna be something like that. But I don't know what's gonna happen right now with this. But I'm gonna see you guys like comment, subscribe. You know it's me, it's me, it's me. The H W O D come in with the news and reviews. You know what I am. You know what I do. Keep watching the show. We're here live all the time. You know it's here. We can hear. We,
Sorry, you know what's here? We done this review today. I'm here with TNA. So I'm out of here. Comment, subscribe. You know what I am. You know what I do. Live reactions, videos, everything, reviews. You know it. What's up? Keep watching the show and tell me what you thought about this episode of TNA Impact Wrestling Night. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace.